Warning, if you are faint of heart or easily offended, this show is not for you. All right, this is the Nick Fertucci Show. I am Nick Fertucci. There are going to be no cute beginnings to this like there normally is. I am here with the infamous Nick Airball. Nick, how are you? Phenomenal. Okay, today is March 27th. My birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Yep, I am one. Yes, you're, yes, thank you. My birthday. Anyways, uh, so we'll see how this goes on my birthday. Um, okay, today is March 27th. It is uh, after... A lot of the Twitter wars that have been going on, it's after the podcast Garrett did today on Doug Polk's. So there's some stuff to unpack here. I usually, when I, when I, usually when I do when a show, I have a very detailed outline of the questions and how the show is going to go. I don't have that. Um, I don't know where it's going to go or where we should start. I'll probably just open up by asking you uh, some very macro questions like, how did this happen? In reference to, uh, and that might be too vague. We'll, we'll we'll pin it down with reference to. We'll get to to Garrett, and obviously there's a thing with Matt that's coming up, and we'll unpack that. So let's start. Uh, let's start actually with uh, the Matt Berkey subject, sure. and the reason is because I think that's not going to go as long. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> what compelled you to go on Doug's and take a take a sharp left? and hit uh, Matt with some of the things you said, because I don't know the origins of what the, what your background is. Okay, so I mean, part of it's just having fun. Okay. Of course, just having fun. And part of it's like expressing how I feel, which is, I think, um, you know, what I said about Matt was that he's a scammer or whatever. And I think that's, in hindsight, maybe that was unfair of me to say. I think the word I'm looking for is fraud, which is what Doug said. Um, I just think it's, you know, what I said is, in my tweet, my last tweet is kind of how I feel. It's pretty disingenuous to run a coaching site when you can't beat games. And uh, I think that makes you a fraud. And so I said how I feel and I said I'd play. Like, I, you know, unlike 99% of people in poker, like I talk a lot of shit, but I'll play. Like I will play. Like when I say I'll play, I'll play. Yeah. And I, he offered, I offered to play him. He ducked me at the lodge. He ducked me, like didn't want to play, didn't want to play. And then he said he'll play in Vegas. And so... I finally just said, fuck it. Like, I'm happy to come to Vegas. Like, let's play. Like, And, I've, and you're going to be going out there for the next how many weekends? Friday, Saturday, Sundays? It's supposed to be like five weekends or something. I don't know. Probably just I have a room booked for the next month there. So I'm <laughs> going to just maybe just stay there. I, cool. I haven't really decided exactly what my plan yet is. I've I'm starting to prepare for the challenge. Like, I'm, I'm excited. Like, to be honest, like I'm kind of I feel like we both talked. We both talked some shit. We both had some fun. We yeah. both got upset, whatever you want to call it. And like. Now we're going to play. Well, and and maybe it's a bad read, but watching body posture and mannerisms, he seems really upset. Whatever. And that probably is what you're looking for because you do that a lot with folks. But um, I would say this, and I was going to say this before you said that. Um, I would agree with you. And this, people would be shocked because they would think I would pile on. I do not think Matt Berkey's a scammer. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't even, I don't think Matt Berkey's a liar. Mm -hmm. Um I think he prides himself on the opposite of that. And if I had to put my money on the line, I would say that those things were not to be true. Now, with that said, I'd have to think about the the, the title of fraud, but I understand where you're coming from with that by your analogy you gave to it or your explanation. Um, you know, Matt, I always kind of hold back. I'm not going to hold back. I just and, and Just because I don't think he's those things, I think... In my perspective, and the reason I have issues with him is because, and Doug said this today, is he just thinks he's smarter than he is, okay? He does use these big words, whether that's contrived or that's just how he speaks, that's up to him, whatever, and everyone's different. Um, He recently, on a podcast, called me average, and um, that's fine, and uh, then they joked about me having a lot of cake, which is money, and it's just funny because, you know... If I'm average, could you imagine how successful I would be if I was fucking smart? <laughs> okay, because I, be I promise fuck. you, I 50x I fucking be that, that bird brain. Okay, I but be I will, yeah, so that's fine, and and I'm good with it. Uh, um, he did say he would. Uh, they pl- Melissa chimed in. This is just a fun thing and said, out of these guys, me, you, and Doug, would you marry, fuck, or fight? 
And Berkey said, I think I'd marry Vertucci so I could fight with him forever because he would outwit me because I'm average and he's smarter than I am. I think he said his IQ is way higher. I forget how he said it. And I think he wants to marry me. So because of community property, oh. and maybe he could finally own a live stream that he's always wanted to. Maybe he can maybe, have a bankroll finally. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, that's <laughs> what you're saying. Okay. So <laughs> enough of the enough of the trolls. But again, I do not think he's a scammer. I think that was unfair. Um, but you came right out and said it yourself. So I'm glad because I was going to debate you on that. Um, I don't think for a minute he would take anyone's money. He would intentionally do those things. And a matter of fact, when I said I don't think he's a liar, I don't. What I think happens is he's so dead set on his own beliefs because of his pompous way of never being wrong. And I know this because people that are even close to him have had issues because he's just never wrong. He's, it, it's insufferable to ever, like for people to like ever try to change his mind. And so when you're like that, and I could name 10 or 15 things from months ago that he has reported on. Like if I really wanted to take the time about Hustler, about players, about this, about VPIPs, about so many things that have been so inaccurate, but I, he's not lying. It's one of two things. He's either, and I think in most cases, not doing his research and just shotgunning his opinion and then sticking to it no matter what. And, and or just sometimes I don't think he'll ever back down off a point because he'll never believe that it wasn't how he saw it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, to me, that's kind of what started all of this. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people don't see it this way, but this is how I see it. Which I see it is like after the Jack Four incident, Matt had a lot to say about Hustler and about Ryan, yourself, the yeah. players, the setup. He had a lot to say, a lot of uninformed opinions to give. And he chose to use his platform, which is a large platform, to yeah. spew nonsense that's not true without even taking the time to get the real information. And for me, like, that's... Like he bought, crossed a line. He he attacked us, and I got upset and called him. Yeah. called him out, and now it's like let's settle it on so the felt. That's so. the so that's the origin. That's where it originates for you. Yep. And and to be fair to Matt, is I think we should always be fair. He did say some things that were true, and unfortunately in life you could say things that have some truth in them that are not true. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that happened. But again. It's neither here nor there. Even bring up what those things are because they would be bait, debated to uh, in indefinitely because no one's mind's ever going to change especially his so okay so one last comment I'll yeah make. yeah i said what i said about matt but i got a lot of respect that he's showing up to play mm -hmm. and now we're going to play yeah and i think all the talking on my end is done like i'll see him on the felt yeah and we'll settle it with the cards and that's it fair enough and i think that's good and and uh yeah i think that's good and i think enough has been said and you know, sometimes it just, I mean, it's going crazy right now. It's going really crazy, bro. But uh, so, yeah, we'll see how that, that pans out. I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, let's get on to why. All right, let me first say this, and then you say what you have to say, and then I'll clean some things up. Um, Garrett was on Doug's today and you could tell he, you know, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy with you. He's not happy with me. He's not happy with a lot of things and, and, and some of it rightfully so. I understand. He did hit back. He hit back very lightly, some ways very subtly, um, always the consummate politician, uh, which is just the way that is. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, he was very upset with me for not giving him a heads up. He was very upset with me for my thumbnail for clickbait. He was very upset for me uh, at me for not editing out that piece with Ben when he asked me directly. Okay, I'm going to hit every one of those, and I'm just going to tell you exactly how it is. Um, yes, I used that thumbnail as clickbait. I did. I did. I do a show. <laughs> I did. And it was in the podcast, and I didn't uh, choose to take it out because it's what was said, and it was what was answered. I did do my best to water it down, and I did do my best to not to use the word banned, now everybody's using it. That's fine. And I did kind of cave a little bit, which looked wishy-washy when Ben's like, well, are any other players banned? Meaning, are any other players not allowed to play on your show? And the answer is yes, there's players. I should have been more clear, so I want to correct it. Um, he wasn't banned. I should have pushed back on Ben and just said no, because it's different. I didn't do that. It was, we don't have a game for him because of all the stuff we're going to talk about. And... Uh, and I don't regret it. 
because what I said was the truth. And to his third point, in fairness, if I'm being honest and fair about how I feel, as far as not giving Garrett a heads up, I will answer it this way. Garrett wants to portray like this amazing synergy that we had to work together at the Jack after the Jack forehand. That's way overstated. Um, Garrett, myself and Ryan really didn't discuss the investigation. We didn't discuss anything. Um, Garrett did not work closely with us when he decided to take an interview from the New York Times or excuse me, the LA Times. So if we were working together to control a narrative or to have each other's back, then I think maybe there would have been a call or a text before we just saw the article. Would that be a fair uh, statement to say if we're going back and forth to, to like make sure we give each other the heads? Garrett did not check with us when he dug in, which is fine. This is his prerogative on the two plus two forum to basically dig in and say that he undoubtedly knows that he was cheated and implicated a lot of things, including our show, without proof. And we didn't get a heads up before that two plus two posting. Okay. There was some other things that we didn't get any heads up on. And so I'm, I, find it, I find it interesting that it's my obligation then to tell him that I answered a question honestly. And we'll get more into that. And I am not here to lay Garrett out. I'm not here to go personal. I'm not here to do anything but just talk about some of the things he says today and give our side of it. Um, but by no means is this a, oh, wow, we were working together and we didn't do our part or I like backdoored him. We, I have not had much communication with him at all and I was not privy to anything that he did or didn't do, including the things that did not really make us look that good. But that was his opinion and he had a right to it. That's why we said nothing about it. We never refuted any of his comments, his tweets or anything else. We let it be. Now, and I'm going to, we're going to get to you, but I just, there's a few things that I'm have, enjoying listening. You are. Okay. The other thing is, um, uh, I lost my train of thought when I looked at you and saw how handsome you were. And I can't th <laughs> remember what the fuck I was going to say, but I'm going to remember it. Um, you were saying you let him tweet and like say his opinion. Yeah. Okay. That was it. So, you know, he made reference in the podcast, rightfully so, that we all, I think it was on text or call or both about the tweet he put out, both supporting each other. I'm going to tell you how I remember it. Um, and what I, what I know my stance was Ryan or Garrett don't remember in what order contacted me and said, we want Ryan, I think told me Garrett wanted to put out a tweet supporting us us putting one out back, and Garrett was the one who pioneered this, not us, us to put one out back out saying that we would support him coming back possibly. This is the truth, and I'm going to just give it to you straight. I didn't want to do it. Ryan and I argued over it. I did not think after what happened that we should go on Twitter right then at that point and make a decision on whether he's coming back or not, considering all the things that he didn't check with us and uh, were not plus EV for us because they were for his best intentions, he thought, or maybe are. And I didn't want to do it. And Garrett's first text that he wrote out for us to post was one of what he did today and always does, making him look like the one who saved the show. And again, I might be overstating this, but basically about protocols, about overzealously wanting him back. Again, I don't remember. I do not remember the words. I just remember looking and thinking, no way, okay? And Ryan was like, you're not good with that? I said, no, I'm not good with that. That's not how I feel. That's not how you feel. Like, why would we do that? Then it got chopped up either by me, him, them, whatever. And like, I finally, it's like a bill going through Congress. You got to take out some of the pork or you got to put in some of the pork, whatever it is. Well, that's what was happening there. And Ryan and I do make decisions together, but sometimes we do lean back and forth on giving someone the final. And I just said, if this is what you want to do, go ahead and do it. Garrett knows very well I wasn't okay with it because I thought it was disingenuous for on his part with the things he was saying and for us to condone that because, and I will go a step further. I initially back a month prior to me doing the thing with Ben, if you would have hit me for views like Doug did on the lodge and things for businessmen, I would have entertained Garrett and Robbie coming back to play together because it would have blown up the internet. 
But I will tell you what, in credit to my partner who said, no, we don't want to do that. Like, believe it or not, like, I don't think, and, and he explained to me and I thought, you know what, considering everything I know about how this was handled, about how things were handled in the past that we're going to talk about, you're right. And, uh, and I respect him for putting his foot down because that's the case. So when I gave the answer on my podcast, I owed nobody a text or a call because no one gave me a text or call when they were doing what they were doing and throwing our show under the bus and many of our people. So that's just the way that is. And this is not, it isn't, it is not attack on Garrett. I am just answering the things that were said today and, and telling it from our perspective. I don't want an ongoing fight with Garrett. I, we don't want any more beef. We don't, uh, if, if everyone wants to just like s stop discussing it, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. But if you do go on a podcast and you say some things that are also in here that are part truths, but not all the way truths, they're going to be um, answered. And, and I so, want to comment on that real yeah. quick. Personally, like that was something I've been doing the last, what has it been? Six months or whatever. I haven't said a word about Garrett, Robbie, Jack for publicly. And I've been asked a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went on the lodge stream, they were talking about the table. When I go out, people come up and ask me, do I think she cheated? I don't talk about it. I don't talk about Garrett. I don't talk about any of them because to me, it was like what happened, happened, whatever. And like, we all move on. Right. And nothing, I wasn't involved in any of this stuff with like when Ben came on here and said, you know, asked you and you guys said Garrett's not like invited or whatever you want to, however you phrase it. Right. That wasn't me. Nothing. I chose to respond only once he brought my name up and whatever he said on Twitter, he said, you know, I'm a terrible person, worst poker player, a terrible person or whatever, you know? And I think like, I'm still happy just not to have any conversation about this. Like, to be honest, it, I think you feel the same. I think Ryan feels the same. It makes us feel icky inside. Like, yeah. it's just like we're fighting and we're arguing and it's negativity. Like, it's not fun. Well, when Ben asked me mm -hmm. the question, I did every, that's why like even Doug today was like, I kind of found that funny because I was wavering. I mm -hmm. was kind of trying to grab on the two narratives. But the reason I was is because I don't want to, didn't want to use the word ban. Now that ship has sailed. He is not welcome on our show after after a few things and and he does not want to play in her show and his fire is lit because he's upset with us and he's gonna play at the bike and that's fine go ahead and i i honestly mean we don't care and it's not because we're cocky or didn't know you know how much he helped our stream because he did he's a great poker player uh he's a, the fans a lot of them love him that some of that has changed since but um and I don't think Garrett is a scammer. I don't think he's a bad person. I, on the contrary, he had mentioned it like we've had a very interesting, rocky, difficult relationship, which we're going to get into why. But there was a time, too, where I considered him a friend, like really re legitimately considered him a friend. And this may sound counter, it may be contradictive to do this, but it does hurt me that it's actually come to this. Like it, it does hurt me. But it is what it is. This has all happened. And I did water down my answer to Ben because what I could have said was, yeah, like we kind of made a decision for him not to play. And I know Garrett, one of the things I think he hates more than anything is that it shows that we made that decision. That's why he said repetitively. He wants over to and over. control. He, you know, oh, I wasn't planning on playing anyways. I was okay, fine, whatever. That's fine. But the fact is, is I could have said those things that you said that you know and a lot of the people feel, but I didn't. I just said, you know, for now it's a business decision. And I was acting wishy-washy because I really didn't want to throw, like he said, throw him under the bus. Um, but what I said was true. So it's still the truth. And yes, I use that, that title to get views. Yes, whatever. <laughs> and if Garrett and if Garrett had been different through this with us and checking in with us and making sure that what also helped him be so successful the last you know year and a half, then maybe I would have not used it on there, but I didn't do it to spite. I just did it because I'm making a podcast. And that's really the most interesting thing that happened. Okay, so there we go on that. Um, any thoughts? Okay, so you've pretty much said your piece in the sense that you're, you're just looking forward now to this match. You have nothing left to say about either thing. Do you feel, though, if you're being honest, 
that some of the things you said and the way you said them were a little, and you don't have to agree with me, please push back or agree, I don't care, were a little bit too overzealous and maybe the delivery, because again, some of the things I have a problem with Matt Berkey is his delivery and his inability to like understand the consequences of his words and his pompousness. And I would say if I'm looking from the outside, I would think your message was a little bit too overzealous. You're talking about when I went on Doug's or previously? Previously, I'm assuming. Kind of right? both. So I think on Doug's, I think I stand by everything I said and the way mm -hmm. I said it. Um, I think maybe the Berkey stuff was overstated, but I'm talking about Garrett right now. Okay. In terms of Garrett, I stand by everything I said on Doug's <clears throat> podcast. Um, my tweets I stand by. I don't think everything I said I can prove. And that's like, you know, I'm just putting that out there. Everything I said I can prove. Right. And I have other stuff that bothers me about Garrett that I didn't say and I won't say because I can't prove it. And I don't think that's fair to throw stuff out that I can't I, prove. I totally agree. Now, all that being said, like, I think it's, I think, you know, I understand why Garrett doesn't like me. I understand why. I think he sees me as a threat. I know he, like, for whatever he says, I know he thinks that, like, I'm bad for, to be in the game because I'm winning in the games that yeah. he's in. Whatever he wants to say, like, it doesn't matter. And, like, I know Garrett, like, has talked about how, like, oh, you know, I was, like, talking shit to him all the time or whatever. Yeah, because, yeah. like, to me, like, I don't – it's not malicious shit talking. Like, when I'm at a poker table shit talking, it's really not malicious. It's just, like, competitive, especially with a guy like Garrett. Like, I would assume he would understand that, like, it's competitive. Let's compete. You know what I mean? Like, let's battle. And whatever. It doesn't matter. And, like, I understand why he doesn't like me. That being said, I feel like I've always been very cordial and respectful – regarding him and I've never like said like fuck Garrett or whatever beyond like poker stuff like let's play like fuck you let's play like that kind of thing I've never said he's a terrible person like I've just said I want to play right like I've always every time I talk shit it's always what let's play poker but not a terrible person but you did allude to the fact that he's a terrible ambassador of private games and he is. the things that he did yeah okay. that, that's that just part a, you stand by that's but that's poker like he's just poker yeah that's all poker I'm not talking about his character Poker, it's just black and white. He's bad for the game. Recreational players don't want to play with him. Yeah. Like, that's just black and white. I mean, I understand it hurts to hear. Like, I understand. Yeah. But the truth is the truth. You can't... Nick, the reason Garrett's not on Hustler isn't because he's banned. It's what you just said. It's because there's no game. There's no game means people don't want to play with him. Yeah. If people don't want to play with you, like, that hurts. Like, I'm banned from certain games. I'm blocked from games. Yeah. I know what games I'm blocked from, and I know why. And it, it's not my favorite thing either, but I also accept that that's part of the game. Yeah. I'm going to be very, very candid about the absolute truth, and I'm going to say it in the m most simple, respectful way, and I'm just going to throw it out there. Now, one thing I want to say is you told me when you got here you did not watch the podcast today. Nope. Okay, I did. And um, and that's why some of the things I have here, you know, that we're, we're going to talk about. Um, and, you know, I, I call – Ryan, I – I think I text Ryan that he called me and I mm -hmm. said, okay, listen, Ryan, I'm having Nick on today. We, I was having you on before yeah. this was even happening. We just have good timing that we have more to talk about because they did that podcast. Yeah. We booked this before yeah. it was announced. Okay. Um, and Ryan said this to me. He said, well, I don't think he said anything too bad, uh, but he did water down a ton of things to protect you know, to make himself look better, to protect himself. Uh, and he was fine with it. And he said, yeah, I don't want to give a statement. And then he rattled off a bunch of things that were part truths or not true. And I said, well, wait a minute. You you have all this. Can I, can I say it? He's like, oh, yeah, you could say it. That's all true. I said, well, that's a statement. Because I said, do you want to, like, make a statement to, uh, like, all the things he said, uh, mostly about you? Mm -hmm. And he said a few things about me, like, there's only a stream because of Ryan. Fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Like, you know, we're I'm good with that. And and I get his point. But, again, it's not about that. Hasn't Ryan said multiple times without you, there's no stream? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, whatever. That's just probably a shot. So, so Ryan said this. Okay. And again, the only reason this is being said is because he was upset that I told the truth in one or two lines in a podcast and I used the thumbnail. I told the truth and I did use that for clicks. So let's just let's just lean into that. But Ryan said today that uh, um, he did control lineups to a point. He is in Garrett. Oh, we're talking about Garrett. Yeah. Uh, he had feelings on all the players and... Uh, uh, 
I don't want to say a rating system because I didn't confirm that with him, but I know that, but it doesn't matter because whatever, he had his feelings and thoughts on every single player. Um, Gar- uh, excuse me, Ryan said he always felt leveraged and pressured at the beginning. Um, his quote, I was always uh, on eggshells during these conversations and some of the reasons, and I'll tell you why. When one year in, Ryan said he uh, kind of realized that he didn't have to be leveraged as much because our show was taking off, and so he had more of the balls to like fight back a little bit and say, like, I can't get you in this game, I can't do that. And, you know, Garrett said, okay, well, you know, I'm very disappointed, that hurts my feelings, you know, I've really done this or whatever. But Ryan said, you know, like his job now is 10x easier and less stressful. And this is from Ryan, not from Nick. There always was an undertone of leverage that if certain things didn't happen, and Garrett would use this as, um, and, and I'll get into conversations we had too later, he would use this as, well, I'm a businessman, this is my business, and I'm going to play where the best lineups are. Meaning, if I don't think your lineup's good enough, I'm going to the bike, okay? does Some things don't have to be said out loud to not know exactly like what they are, okay? Uh, let's see. He would oftentimes convince Ryan for a seat, even when Ryan knew maybe he shouldn't be doing that. Um, uh, again, he said, I will always play whoever has the better lineup, meaning give me my wishes or, you know, I'll probably go to the bike. He mentioned something today about Wayne, not trusting Wayne. That's an inaccurate comment, but he has said before to us that he doesn't trust Wayne's lineups, that he would be told certain players would be there and they wouldn't, and he would get there, or a certain player would be plugged in, and he trusted lineups from Ryan Moore. So that is, in fact, how it was said. Who, however that came out, I don't know. Um, there would oftentimes you would see a Friday game with six or seven players. The reason for that is because that's all Ryan could get him to agree upon because he often could not put in, and these are just a handful of names, and there's many more, Nick, Airball, Art, Deshaun, Zio, Lynn, Henry, Brian, Kim, and many more. And Ryan would say, can I just make the game like seven, eight-handed or even nine-handed so like if someone goes bust, our show doesn't break? And the answer was usually no, or he wouldn't play. And that's a direct quote from uh, Ryan. Don't, uh, he would never let him fill the seats. Um, but he would want, if we're going to fill a seat with a pro or a killer, he would want his friend John Cohen to play. So that could be the exception. Now, I don't have any proof, but there has been talk about John Cohen being staked by Garrett. But I will say on the mic, that is me putting something out of the air. If Garrett wants to say that's not true, he probably will. But that's the case. But even if that's not the case, why is it okay for a very good player like John Cohen to be put in, that's Garrett's best friend, and not one of these other people that have also also been loyal to the game in our show. So um, on the John Cohen thing... And I mean, also uh, Chris Brewer never played on our show, but back at the bike, he was also one that Garrett would allow in the game. And Chris Brewer is a crusher. Yeah, so John so. Cohen and Chris Brewer, um, I've never met them, never played with them. But By the way, both wonderful guys. I'm sure. I love John Cohen. He's the nice, sweetest guy I've ever met in my life. I have also heard from many people about this, you know, Garrett having pieces of them in games that he then allowed them to play. I never spoke about it because once again, I can't prove it. I'm sure he's going to say no, but I've heard this from, you know, people I am <laughs> very confident. And I also think it's interesting, just what you said, he would say no to all these other people, but if he was okay with, you know, a pro or two, it's, it's these specific guys. I always think that's interesting um, from someone who has clearly demonstrated that they're about their bottom line, not anyone else's. And so, you know, people can make whatever assumptions they want to make from that or think about it and come up with their own conclusions. But I think, you know, it's pretty um, interesting that he would allow them to play and not other players who are definitely worse winning players. Yeah. And so here's the, here's the takeaway. The takeaway is this, like, look, just like he leaned a little into this today because there's so much truth there, but he watered it down. It's okay. Like if he had the ability to do this and the clout, then okay. He did. And we made business decisions and chose to, well, Ryan did chose to, adhere to it okay but that's the truth don't lean away from it if it's the truth and you know what a lot of people will think that like you know i'm a little brash and i'm gonna say some shit here and there that's whatever but like ryan feldman 
like this is his words. And, and I have not said one thing here today that isn't the truth. I, I haven't. And Garrett, like was there was an article by Greg, uh, Craig Tapscott today. I forget. Was it poker or something? Poker.org, I think. Po- po- poker.org. Okay. It came out. Go read the article. And Garrett did mention that him and Vertucci had a, t- a, a, a complicated relationship. Um, however he put it. If I'm misquoting, maybe he said tough one. I don't know. Well, here's what he's alluding to. <clears throat> and that's true. We did. I often, I've had, and Garrett could attest to this. I've had hours of, of conversation with Garrett on the phone about couple different subjects and here's how they always end it and again this is the truth Ryan would come to me now I wouldn't have a lot of conversations with Garrett about lineups I stayed out of that but I knew because Ryan would often come to me and just say fuck man like and he would you know as his partner confided me the pressure and the guilt and some of the, the vent he would vent and so I knew all that was going on I'm a businessman and so I understood why we had to make some of those decisions, but they were hard for me. And that's why Ryan is better at this than I am when it comes to lineups, because I probably would have had a hard stop, no, and maybe mess things up because of principle. And Ryan is able to massage egos and requests, and he is the best at it. The and best. so kudos to him. So I always just let him, and I would just like bite my tongue. But the things Garrett and I would have the tenuous relationship on is this. And, and Doug brought it up today, or Garrett did, and Garrett leaned into this a little and actually took some accountability for this, but let's make it even more clear. And I had this problem with you. I had the problem with you. Well, one thing I was going to say about what you said about the trolling and the unsport, I don't agree with that. I agree that some trolling is okay. You've made your popularity by being you know, the Tony G of today's game, but maybe even more. Um, you and I have fought relentlessly almost to a point where we stopped speaking of the fact that like you needed to back off on some players. And I would include maybe not Garrett as much because he's a pro and he's winning a ton of money, so maybe he could handle it. But even some of the things like when people are like, I know for me, like when I'm playing poker, I want to enjoy myself. And I know this about Garrett too. Like he loves poker and he's a killer and he wants to win, but he does have a good time playing. And when he's, when he's, you know, winning and like feeling good about poker, and nobody wants to go through that when they're playing, right? So you and I have talked about that, and I've been very upset with you at times. And there's been some other things that I've been upset with you that you've corrected that I'm going to talk right now about why I would spend hours on the phone with Garrett. Literally hours, like one, two hours on the phone and not accomplish shit, okay? And it went like this. <clears throat> we have a t- anyone who runs a live stream at our level has a very tough job to do in so many respects. And one of those respects are... You have to protect your players. Mm -hmm. You have to respect your players. Mm -hmm. You have to respect that if your players are coming to play a certain game, they should come to play that game. Now, players are embarrassed on stream to say, no, don't put on the 800, don't put on the 400, no, don't do this. They, They are too embarrassed. One of the situations, if you saw me at the All Star game, I was on fucking monkey tilt because there was text, there was verbal, with Garrett especially and Andy a little bit because Andy used to always you know, I got those texts too. Do you not, got him too. I got asked by Ryan before the All Star game. He said, "Were you Nick, in it? Yeah. He's, were you there when Double M? R- yeah, the rant. Oh, yeah. Okay, I forgot you were in it. Yeah, uh, Garrett was raging at me that day. That's the day where he was like, "Oh, Andy, I love playing with you because you lose with you win with class or whatever." Oh yeah, see, I yeah. forgot you were even in it. Um, I, but you got the same. Text. Ryan texted me before then and said, "Hey, there's multiple players who have requested to not have the hundred dollar straddle on. We can do rounds every once in a while. Can you please be respectful of that." And I said, "Yeah." And that's not what happened. Yeah. So the very first hand or two. First hand. First hand. And I thought I was being punked because I even verbally told Didn't, these guys. Because I was I had, laughing my ass off. I, had, I thought you were being punked too. I, I, that's what I thought. It was being punked. I thought so too. I had Shashimi and Ron who both said, please do not let this game play bigger than whatever it was. And we'll get to that because this is how people are so afraid and they want to be fit in that mm-hmm. that's why I was really tilted. The very first hand, this is the exact move. Straddle, straddle, Garrett, straddle, everyone. Oh, okay, 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 good. And he would do it as a joke, but he'd put it out and everyone would just be paralyzed and just be like, well, okay. And we would do a round. And it was the very first hand after all of that. And I looked and, and I thought it was gonna, he was going to take it off as a joke and he didn't. And, and he, to my left, <laughs> double straddled. <laughs> and I'm like, I even said, am I being punked? And I wasn't. And then, you know, the rest is history in that game. And then, you know, at the... 
at the lockers, and I've said this before on the stream, at the lockers I had Shishimi and Iron busting my balls, but here's what happened first. So Ron doesn't say shit. Shashimi doesn't say shit, which is to my point. They don't want to be embarrassed. It's and at one point, Shashimi put on like the triple and then Garrett, like to make Garrett happy. And then Garrett put out the knuckles and they knuckled. And that's when I thought to myself, first time ever, fuck it. I'm not, I, this is now production's job. I don't want to be upset when I play. I don't want to have bad blood with players. If production doesn't want to protect this game, meaning Ryan and whatever, and we'll get to you and I when we had that blowout, then fine, fuck it. But then when I get to the locker, Shashimi and Ron had, had the balls to say to me, like, oh, this game's playing bigger. We said, I said, hold on. You know you got to speak up, and you put the fucking triple on or the double on, and you gave a fist pump. I'm out. You guys figure it out yourselves. And I walked away because I was done. With you, I was in a Tuesday game. Okay, and the Tuesday game started playing like ridiculous. Fucking 100, 200, 400. You were, you were uh, post-flop betting 6,000 no matter what you had. And I had people sitting there with $6,000 stacks, 10,000. And everyone was like paralyzed. And uh, you and I had talked about this a million times, but you went ahead and did that. I don't know if you were drinking. And I had an hour and a half left of the stream and I left. I got up and I went and sat down where we eat. Ryan came out and goes, oh, I know, like whatever. And I said, no, screw it. I said, I've argued with this with you a million times. Either you're going to whatever. Because the bottom line is it's a tough dynamic. The bigger the game plays, the more the fans like it. But the bigger the game plays and a player or two players or all these key players won't come anymore. They yeah. stop coming on Wednesday. They stop coming. Like all these players, like we did this new Thursday game because they were upset the because it's like you can't depend that the game is going to be this because it's going to be 3x bigger and they can't play. Yeah, so I mean, that's something that I had to learn. Like playing in the games, I always was like, I had the the viewer's mentality, I guess, which is like the sicker the game is, like the bigger, the crazier, that's what people want to see. So when I'd play, I'd be like, let's make the game big for the fans, right? And uh, it took me time to understand why that's bad. Like, it's just not, that's just not the way to do it. Like, yeah. it makes players uncomfortable, which just doesn't work. It, it, it makes the ecosystem not healthy. Like, mm -hmm. not everyone can lose at the rate of a huge game. Like, not everyone can play 501k and lose at the rate that a 501k will call game will cause you to lose that you know right. and so it just is a net negative to have the games be too big and also like it just becomes a it becomes a situation where people aren't having fun and like i guess it took me a little bit of time to understand like the impact i was having where like part of pushing the game or being too mm -hmm. crazy was making people not have fun and once i realized that like i felt strongly like about adjusting like and you know this is part of the reason we fought was because i didn't get that it took me some and I'm willing to admit it. Like I didn't get it. Like yeah. I genuinely thought like what I was doing was good for everything. Right. Yeah. And then after talking to you, fighting with you, like we fought, it's fine. Like we fought. Yeah. We're adults yeah. talking to Ryan, talking to Billy, talking to all these people. I started to learn, Oh shit. It's not just about this. Like there's other aspects. You have to think about the whole player pool, how people feel and what yeah. other people want. And like, you know, in fairness to Iron and Sashimi, like I get it. Like it's, it's nerve wracking when you're sitting there and you know, the biggest star in poker is saying straddle of course it's nerve wracking. You don't want to say no, no, like people won't do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I just, I totally get the pressure. I, that's why like nowadays, like for me, I think it's really important. I always want to know who wants to straddle, who doesn't. Dude, because, if you got eight players on a Friday game that are playing deep and they want to play big, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's better for our stream. I mean like, okay, let me just give two examples. It's two Fridays ago. I lost seven fifty. I was stuck 400,000, the 400 wasn't even on because I didn't ask for it to be on. Then the players said, okay, we'll put it on for you, Nick, because you're buried. And then I myself just put the 800 on a lot because I was like, I'm not going to ask anyone else to do it. That's making the game way too big, but I'm tilted. I want to do it. Sure. Then, for example, I get it all in with Dentist Dave for 20,000 each when I'm stuck 700,000. Yeah. Do you think I want to run it twice, Nick? No. You see me want to run it once in huge pots because I'm, I want to run it once. I just want to gamble, right? right. But if a player wants to do that, let's do it. Let's make everyone happy. Let's be comfortable. It doesn't matter. Like, it just doesn't matter. Like, sure, running it once, maybe that, like, wins me more money or whatever because, like, I'm a better player. And if he doubles, like, I can win it back. And if he loses, like, I win the money or, or whatever your logic is, right? It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. we're playing a fucking super fun game in a fun environment with fun people. Like, it's not that big of a deal to have every little thing be yeah. set up the way I right. want it. And like, that's to me is like made, it's made me happier. It's also improved my relationships with all the players. Like 
as soon as like Ryan told me, for example, like, hey, this Friday, so and so doesn't want to straddle every every down. And then the first time I came on a Friday after that, like he told me this, and then I someone said straddle round, I said no. And that player afterwards told me like, hey, thanks for watching out for me. And yeah. I could tell it meant a lot for them, and for it sure. made them enjoy the game. They're more. gonna trust that game and they're mm -hmm. going to come back and play. And if that didn't happen, they're likely not coming back and we lose player pool and there's so much more attrition. So go, you want to finish? Yeah. Yes. And so look at like, so that, so two Fridays ago, right? I lose 750,000. The next Friday game, which is last Friday, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think I felt going to that game, Nick? Do you think I wanted to play a small game? Of course not. Do you think I wanted to play a tough lineup? Do you think I wanted to not have the 400 on right away? No. Of course. But if you go watch the footage, people can watch. I never once said straddle round. Right. Every single time it was someone else. And the reason it was never me that Friday is because before the game, I was told, hey, we don't want the 400 to be permanent. We don't want it on because certain players had asked. So despite being stuck a million dollars in the last two sessions at Hustler, I came there and did not put the 400 on once because it wasn't a, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I think like, I think Garrett lost sight of managing the player pool and making everyone happy and like right. it just becomes a point where people like don't want to play with him and yeah. that sucks well i'm gonna be yeah I, and i'm gonna be clear on this next point and the only reason i'm commenting on any of this is because garrett did on dugs and i'm setting the record straight from how both ryan and i saw it and know it if anything i said prior to this is an untruth call me out I'm telling that to garrett please correct the correct the 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 record and if anything I say after right now is incorrect, which is only going to be business talk, go ahead and call it out because it's true. The truth is, is I used to be on the phone with him talking about this re relentlessly because of his uh, fame and popularity and, you know, Ryan uh, putting him in the lineup. So it had to be talked about at times. Um, and a lot of times, you know, Ryan would try to have me maybe talk some sense into some of this, and this is how they would go. I would tell Garrett just what you said. Listen, I understand you want to play bigger. I understand you're the best player at the table. You should want to play bigger. But you have to understand, and we talked about this for hours, round and round, from so many different perspectives, and I'll tell you how it always ended. And I used to say, listen, man, like, I know you're doing what's best for you, but you have to help us do what's best for us, which is best for you. Help us help you. It's so cliche. I never said those words, but that's kind of what I'm saying is like, look, we have players that will play in your game right now that you would want in the game, but they won't play in the game because they know it's going to play too big. They know you're going to force the action and they are too embarrassed to say anything, especially to you. And if you would just let them buy in for what they wanted to buy in, let them... I hate to say this, but I said it so it's true. And I'm just going to say it because it's true. Like, you're going to probably get it all. Just get it slower. Don't be so greedy. Because if they can buy in what they're comfortable and play the stakes they want, you're just going to get it a little slower in, in, in a form of multiple bullets. I'll tell you what it is. It's like a guy shows up, right, to play 100-200. He has 100K. He plays 100-200 all night, loses 100K, he goes home. Babe, that was a fun night of poker. I lost. He shows up to play 100, 200 the next time, right? Brings mm -hmm. 100K, and it's 100, 200, 400, 800, and he loses 100K in the first 10 minutes. So, yeah. He goes home to his wife. That wasn't Fuck fun. That. I'm not going back next week. Yeah, it wasn't what I was promised, and that's I can't go do that again. It's like sticking your tongue in a light socket. It's not like, why do it if no. it's not working out? And so we would go around and round on this for literally sometimes hours, and I would be so upset because for me, for me, yes, I'm running the business. I'll give you one example. Do you remember George that used to play on Fridays? Mm -hmm. Sweet guy. Yep. Used to play. Drawn dead. True. You know, he complained to us probably two or three weeks in a row that he doesn't want the straddle to go on, that it's playing too big for him. Ryan talked to Garrett about it. I specifically talked to him about it with his name saying he said this. He idolized Garrett so much you could tell at the table like he was giving him action and doing things with him because he idolized him. And Garrett did not adhere to these requests and George busted out. Like I'm not saying he doesn't have money but he just stopped playing on our stream. It was embarrassing Got to him. Got tired of it. That 
the guy that runs that tracker thing, I've talked to him many times to say stop it because pe- players are embarrassed. He's not plus EV for our show. Everyone loves to see the winnings and losses, but you know, the losing players don't want that. And so they don't want to be embarrassed on stream. They don't, you know, so he just stopped playing. So it, attrition happens by financially faster. And then they also are too afraid to play. And when we would go round and round on this, and this is like, he can't, he can't refute this. This is just what we talked about. This is not personal. He would say at the end of it, I know you're running a business, but I'm running a business. This is my business. And I'm going to do what's best for my business and playing bigger, straddling and making sure it plays deeper is for his business. And so Garrett is, was my friend. He's tr- when he said that we did have a relationship where I considered him a friend really did. And I still don't like, he, we're probably not friends now considering this. Cause I'm sure he hates my guts because of the, what I said, but I didn't say anything that wasn't true. And I wasn't going to say it, but the fact is, is that that is in fact what happened. And at the end of the day, I started getting even resentful inside because I thought that's just selfish. Like it's selfish. Like you can't get it a little slower. Um, I don't know. And so for me, because it wasn't good for our player pool and because it was so, I don't want to say insubordinate because it's like he didn't work for us, but like we like he said we had a common goal together build a great stream he had a great daniel negrano said it best like he had a great little cherry patch like why fuck it up and you know we the only reason this has happened is because once this jack four thing happened and then he just had to take a break our game started playing deeper they started playing better uh i can tell you this right now post jack floor four this is the truth we had a handful of players or more say because of the way this was handled with no proof and loyal to our stream we won't play with them and people were done with it and this unfortunately was the dust that got kicked up and that's the pressure we were under too so it's like i can name five players right now that we probably have to have in the game and i'm not going to name those players because it's up to them if they want to step up And for the record i never ever ever blocked garrett or tried to get a band or anything i've always i will confirm that you have never even asked us what the lineup is before never. we play. That's, I know, because Ryan has told me that and you have made that statement. I never have said anything yeah. about that. So that is 1,000% the truth. I would have never come out to say it unless he said what he said today. I'm not looking for an ongoing beef. If he wants to stop, I'll stop. Uh, I really meant it when I say I wish him the best. I don't think he's a bad person. Uh, I don't think he's unethical. What he did was just to his benefit. It's not unethical. It's not scammy. It's just he had a popularity he leveraged. And that's the fucking truth. And that's, I'm sorry, it's the truth. He's a good person. I know he cares about what people say about him. Uh, I know he loves his wife. I know he's got this kid coming. And I and I hope, like, like, I know that just sounds so like, oh, I say all these things and I say that. But I mean both. Like, I do not have anything personal against him except for that some of the things he's saying are not accurate. Like, they're just not. And they're watered down. And I get that. Like, you know, Garrett has always been, like, the consummate, like, politician. Like, go run for politics. Like, he's really good at saying one thing and then saying the other to throw, you know, you off over here. But, like, sometimes the fact is, like, and again... Anything I said here that wasn't true, please come out. And if I misspoke, I will correct it. I will apologize. I actually kind of, I, I, like, the only thing that I could say I totally agree with him, but I did do it for that reason, is the thumbnail. But why is that bad? Like, I, it, why is it, it bad it, to want Because it, it, it isn't. It aren't just you making, because, like, are yeah, you marketing? I, I am. And like I said, because of the fact that we've never checked with anything he's done and given these interviews to the time, you know, I just didn't feel like I needed to, but I could understand why he felt that way, but I, yes, 100%, in fact, used that title so people would watch because that was the most interesting part of the interview, and I wasn't going to cut it out because it was, in fact, true. I wasn't looking, like he said today, to, like, poke the bear or, you know, get this started. I was asked a question. I kind of fumbled with the answer because I didn't want to use the word banned because, I, I, in my eyes, he's not banned. Banned is like a guy that comes in and admittedly cheats or we catch him or something happens, you're fucking banned. Garrett's not banned. Skills and he, Rock. And he, Skills Rock yeah, is banned. He's banned. 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 Cheater, banned. scumbag, Never leaned back. into it and said, I did it. Banned. You're banned. Yep. Garrett's not banned. 
So anyone could keep saying that. He could say it. He could use the word. And he even said this, like, who knows way down the road, whatever. I feel the same way. I don't know. And I, like I said, I know he doesn't want anything to do with our stream. That's okay. He could even be the one where he wants to feel like he made that decision. We don't care, like, honestly. And we do appreciate our past relationship and him playing and his popularity. And we do. But there's just a lot of... Um, there was just a lot of shit that went with that relationship. I think like the best thing for the audience to basically see that kind of like explains the point you're trying to make is how the games have been pre Garrett and post Garrett. It's what you said after yeah. Garrett left players have become a lot more comfortable. The games have been much bigger, much deeper, a lot crazier. Like, I mean, I feel like there's certain players. I don't want to say names, but like certain recreational players who played fr who play every Friday. Right. And have played with, or not every Friday, but play frequently on Fridays. I played with Garrett and play without him. And when he's been gone, like since he's been gone, they've been insane. Like they do stuff that I've never seen them do when he was there. Right. And it's cause I think they just feel more comfortable. And like, of course I've had players talk to me Friday players and say like, they enjoy Fridays a lot more now because the game is just more relaxed. I mean, there's no, like for example, there's no time chips now on Friday. You know what I mean? Like, Time chips are really bad for a game. That's the truth. Like people don't realize this, but time chips are horrible for a game. Time chips make a game from being like, "Hey, let's gamble, let's have fun," to like thirty seconds to act, eight seconds to act. like. It's like so serious. Are you saying there's no time chips because he used to want time chips? Yeah, that's the only reason there was time chips. That's How do you know that? Because Ryan's told me. Okay. Like Garrett, asked I just want to make sure yeah. you say the source because sure, sure. you're saying it. Time chips were only brought in because Garrett bitched about people taking too long, which is funny because in my opinion, he always took the longest. But whatever. Like I just think like small stuff like that where like. It just, the proof is in the pudding. Like, the well, think about this. The time chips benefit the thinking player who knows their decisions, who understands poker the best. Recreational players or players that need time can't think that fast. So that benefits pros. I'm just saying it of benefits course, them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit something. I, when I had been playing recently, wanted the, the time chips. Ryan and I fought over it because I wanted the game to go faster, and I probably was a little plus EV in some of the games when we were playing at the beginning, right? And so I'm guilty of that. So I just want to admit that. Sure. But to be honest with you, I never really thought of it the way you just said it, and because of that, I agree. And and now would never put a time chip in because I didn't look at it that way. I just subconsciously knew that was better for me because I could see more hands and like I kind of knew what I was going to do, you know, and so but now that like I've learned from this, we should probably never have him. Never. Yeah, it's I agree. For the I agree now. And Ryan, Ryan was right. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, another thing like on Fridays now, like if you go to the bathroom and you come back, come back for free. No Don't post. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> remember when he you did went, it to me? Yeah. I mean, like you went times. to the bathroom and he came back. And was said, it the all star game? No, it, oh, was, Friday. it was a Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday game. And he said, you're angling the blinds. By going yeah. to the bathroom. Yeah, we were we <laughs> we were. I was very upset in that game. It was a Friday game, and basically alluded to I was angling the blinds. I had to take a le fucking leak. Yeah, you know. And, and you take a lot of breaks. I played with you a lot of poker. Yeah, I've seen you take breaks and miss your button. I've seen you take breaks and miss your blinds. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you take oh, yeah. breaks and miss middle position. I never would miss a straddle or a, or anything you else. You just get and up me, to break. It's just when I feel break. like getting up to check my phone or whatever, I get it. Can verify. But I didn't like that assumption when it happened, and I was very tilted. That's what I'm saying. We had. A kind of relationship that went back and forth. I, we probably had to unpack that after it was over mm -hmm. too, and not come to an agreement. Here's what I'll say: the kind of just like a uh, thing about Garrett. So like, I think Garrett's right when he says like, "Hey, all this is within his right to do, and like it's his business, and it's his pursuit, and it's his bottom line." Yeah, I agree completely. That's within your right to do all of that, whatever. However, you also then can't have your cake and eat it too, and then be upset when people are then upset with your actions right if you choose to act in your own best interest all the time and then other people get bothered by that and don't want to play with you or don't like you you can't be upset about that like he can't he doesn't have the right to be upset that he can't play at hustler right now because there's no game because the reason there's no game is because of him like because of his choices it's not like there's no game because people i've never this is a fact so i've played with everyone who plays at hustler pretty much right all the regs and i'm pretty close with almost all the regs whether people believe it or not i am they call me i talk to them on the phone everyone tuesday guys wednesday guys thursday yeah. guys they all talk to me on the phone they give me hands we just chat about life all of them who have complained to me about garrett have never said he's too good at poker never no that usually I've wasn't never the, heard that. that wasn't the the rub no one has ever 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 complained about that i'll confirm that yeah it's always the other stuff it's just like it's just people are smart like 
these guys who play on Friday, like the big game, right? These are the sharpest guys in the world, some of them. Like, you don't crush business. You don't crush stock market. You don't crush life without being sharp, mostly, right? They know what is what. Like, they know why Garrett's saying straddle. They know, right? They understand that, like, the goal there is to get the money faster. And at some point, like, you don't want to feel like a piece of meat that's just being consumed by someone. Well, it's getting the money faster, but it's putting people under pressure Mm -hmm. for a lot of money more than they would. And he is willing to put that kind of money out and play power poker. So he had a distinct advantage, stack advantage Mm -hmm. over people because they were, their stacks were always at risk. Sure. And I I just, I feel like, I think that like people, like, I want to say this, I admired Garrett coming up. Garrett's probably the reason I play poker. Probably like I find it hard to imagine I'd be as into poker as I am without Garrett because I remember getting into poker. It was watching Garrett on Fridays like that. Like I live at the bike, you know, like that was, yeah, that was my whole week was built around that Friday show. Like I was fucking looking forward to it every time. Like I was in China. Like you can ask my friends who went to school with, I would be up at 5 a.m. on Saturdays, like to watch the, like that's what got me into poker. Right. Right. If you see how I play poker, like it's clear that like I buy in deep. I, I try to put a lot of pressure on people. Like I, I took a lot. There's from a my, lot of similarities. Right. And like, I well, I'm happy to say it. Like I admired Garrett's game for a long time. And like, I also admired who he was at the table and I, I, all this stuff that I saw that I thought, wow, like this guy really does everything the right way. And I'll, all I can say is like coming here and experiencing being a part of it. It's been different and it's been frustrating and eye opening. Well, it's and behind it's not, the scenes stuff now you see versus TV. Yeah. And right. I think like there's a disconnect between like the TV and like the reality and like the viewership doesn't see that disconnect. And I think like, the player pool it's, has a much different perspective and feeling on what happens. And the reality is, and you can attest to this, I'm sure, you fight with players who are regulars from the show about certain things, straddles, whatever. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone wants something a certain way. Lineups. Mas- who gets the massage first on a Tuesday? <laughs> Have you and Chris not gotten to big arguments about that? Like, whatever. Yeah, like, because he threatened not to show up if I took right, the masseuse. So, so I there's, had to... there's all sorts of crazy shit that happens in, right. this, in this poker fucking world. Like, I didn't know any of that. but when And the fans don't know any of this, but there's so much that goes on. And like, some of it's just like friends and... Ryan called me and said, like, I know she's going to do you first on Tuesday, but he won't come. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's a joke, right? And he's like, no, because he texted me that. Because I thought we were joking back yeah. and forth. And... And then Ryan called me. I go, that wasn't a joke. He goes, no. He's like, seriously not coming. I, I said, what Luda. world do I live in? I yes, give him the masseuse. Luda. I love Luda. Jesus. Luda's like, I don't care who's playing, but if I don't get the masseuse yeah, first, I'm not fucking coming. Yeah, he was not coming. <laughs> this is what's going on with players. Like, there's weird quirks, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. This and is, I love that yeah. stupid fuck. And like, this is the <clears> thing. Like, it's there's so much that happens behind the scenes for every fucking game. Like, I, like I'm very close with Billy. Let me tell you, the Monday game, like the amount of work he puts in for just to get the lineup every week, it's like he's like dying every week. Like every week he's miserable with people fucking blasting him with like begging him to play. And this is why I, this is why him, and this is why not him. Dude, people have no clue how miserable like some of the back end stuff is for Ryan and stuff, like getting lineups together and oh, keeping hard. people happy. Like it is so hard because what people don't realize is this is high stakes poker. Every game, Monday's high stakes poker, Tuesday's high stakes poker, Wednesday's high stakes poker, Thursday's, they're all high stakes. They're different levels of high stakes, but they're all high stakes, mm-hmm. right? The money the losing players are losing is real significant money. Like people are losing cars and houses on a regular basis. Yes. That's not something that people are just like happily giving away. You have to make sure they're getting what they want in return for losing, which is the entertainment and the joy of the game. And I think that, what Ryan does very well is he makes sure that everyone enjoys themselves and the lineups are built to enjoy themselves. And I think that with Garrett being gone, Ryan's now had the ability to truly build the lineups the way he wants to make everyone happy. And I think it's just shown with the players and the action. And like, look at the top 25 hustler put out a video, top 25 biggest pots of 2022. Right. There was one pot with Garrett, the Dylan hand. And then the rest of the pots were just, had nothing to do with him. I mean, obviously a lot of them were Keating game or whatever. It was just crazy. But there's also just a million hands from Fridays where we, that we played since he's gone. The game's been way bigger. Yeah. And it's just because people are more comfortable now and like yeah. willing to just torch a full stack because they don't feel like there's like someone in there who's playing perfect and looking to get there the whole time. Like, I mean, I personally think that like guys like Charles and stuff like to play with me because they know I'll torch a stack to them. Yeah. Like, well, and I think our games, to, to, in defense of, of Garrett, too, on that, mm-hmm. our games have evolved into where they are, meaning, 
Like, the Friday game, it pretty much is, if you want to play Friday, you're going to play whatever it's going to be, right? Even though you guys are still being respectful to the straddle and going once and all that. But it's, it's kind of known now, like, if you want to jump in on a Friday, you're probably going to have to agree. Uh, the Wednesday games have started to play a little bit big, too. And I'll say this, Garrett was pressuring to play on the Wednesday, and, he, you know, Ryan caved in a few times, too, and it just wasn't good for our show. And, and you know, that was happening, too. And, again, you know... And one other thing today that really struck me, and it just bothered me, and I think I have this right. Ryan, we've talked about this, so I'm just going to say it is like, you know, what, Garrett, this is this first thing goes along with what I'm going to say. The, Garrett put out a tweet. I think it was, maybe it was the one that, like, I agreed to because I had to, or maybe it was a different one. I don't know, but he said something like he was heartened to the fact that now security is being whatever, basically taking credit for the fact and, and and that incident did shake things up and it did make this happen but also today he said something like you know i've always was worried about yes, that I, like I come on yeah that. like no bullshit bullshit and i can't i i he can refute that because that's his that's his comment and i can't get in his head but i know that's bullshit because you know this is exactly what happened what happened was when we first launched and this is why i had the beef with the bike the guys at the bike not not Houston Curtis, but the original owners, Wayne and, and JJ, again, I'm good now. I've called the truce, whatever. I called them out on the commerce thing. They weren't happy about that. Whatever. I'm sorry. It's just something I heard and we'll see if it happens. But I don't, but I do have a truce with them and I don't have a beef. But what happened and the reason I did though is because when we were first launching, they got in the heads of about 10 or 15 players that were basically trying to say that we were going to collude. We were going to cheat. We we're going to do all these things. Don't trust us because they were afraid. And these players came back to us, including Garrett, who told us that they had said this, including Francisco, who since apologized to us personally because he kind of believed it and didn't know if he wanted to play on our show. And I could give you a bunch of others. And like I said, I have a bunch of signed stuff that if it continued, like from them, David said, if it continued, I was going to launch a missile at the bike because I was like, hey, compete. But don't lie and don't do this, right? So Garrett, back to Garrett, Garrett came back and shared his concerns and got a full walkthrough and whatever he wanted and was put out a thing how he was completely happy and secure with everything. And then even after he made a couple of things when he was trying to stay in, you know, in line with us about like our security and everything else. But then today when he's upset and he's mad about my thumbnail and he's mad about me basically saying, yeah, we don't have a place for you. He basically goes on this like security rant about how the whole industry, listen, if this Jack four thing didn't happen and everything was still going along, which I'm glad that the protocols got in place, I'm not su suggesting they shouldn't, Garrett would still be playing and he'd be fine and he was fine. So like, I don't know. That's just me saying like, I just think that's a little bit of a stretch just because he's just not happy, but it's because I think it's nonsense. But anyways, whatever. I can't prove that. So that's the only thing I said today. That's just my opinion versus like everything else. Prove me wrong mm -hmm. because it's true. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just, it's just one of those things like, and, and again, I'll say this too, and I'm going to say it now, like kind of said it in a roundabout way, very watered down. But Garrett doubled down on it today, and that's his right. I think it's horseshit that you tell you call somebody a cheater without proof. If she's a cheater, fucking prove it. I'm not saying she didn't. She may have. I don't know. He wants to say, you know, all these things happen, and ironically this happened, and for sure, for sure, but he's being careful because he doesn't want to be sued. Okay, if you're digging in like that, then prove it. Where's the proof? The two plus two was no proof. It was your opinion. It was your feel. And I'll tell you what, that's fine. Like anyone could feel that way. If you want to feel that way, feel that way. I know there's a lot of people like Doug that says most likely he did. That's fine. But like, hey, I still stand where I stand on that. Like <laughs> I'm not even going to get into Robbie. I'm not going to get into that subject. That is a whole nother subject that I don't even want to talk about. I am not pleased with a bunch of things, but I have never come out and, and not because it's my show. I've never come out and said she cheated even if I thought she did at one point when I was wavering, because it's reckless. It's still reckless. And um, can we disagree that like in general with these things, you can't, you can say what you want to say as Garrett, he can say she cheated him. Right. But once everyone has done their own investigations, everyone has searched through everything, whether or not you feel that way, you yeah. as like, as a person who's a part of the community, you are you owe it to everyone to be fair and not to continue to spew nonsense without proof. At the end of the day, like I understand that Garrett feels cheated. 
He I believes would, that. I, I know would, that. I would feel fucking cheated there. I get it. But I also hope that I would have the ability to internalize what happened, let the investigation happen, and if the investigation came back as it did with no evidence, to just move on publicly. Whether I kept it internally, I sure. was still held up on it. That's one thing. But I think it's like pretty unfair of him to continue to go on saying like she cheated well, when like he has no proof. I mean, if, if that was, if I was her, I would be incredibly upset by that. I mean, in poker and gambling, your name is everything, your character calling yeah. someone and calling someone a cheater is the biggest no, no. Yeah. It's just like when the word got used about Berkey was scammer, I think that's fucked up. Sure. And like, that's why we had this conversation. Yeah, it's and fucked up. Like I th talked, there's to, no proof of that. Sure. I talked I to multiple, yeah. multiple people about that, which is why I came on here and said, yeah. like, I think that was I mean, unfair of me. Uh, this isn't about labeling people you don't like mm -hmm. because you want to just like bury them. Sure. I don't believe in that. Sure, yeah. And the same thing goes with this. Like just because it was inconclusive doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah. I'm not a fool. I'm not saying I'm taking a stance and I want to say, no, she didn't. What I'm saying is, if I don't know she didn't, I would never make that claim. Even if, and, and I know I would feel different if it happened to me. I know that. But I still would have enough brains to know that you can't do that. And he did allude to the fact that it may not have been the best business decision, but I don't think it was the right moral decision yeah, as well. And, and it, it very well may have happened. And unless you have proof, you can't do it. Some of the smartest and most respectable people in this industry, like he referenced Daniel Negrano, like this is how most of the level-headed people feel. Like the ones that want to go crazy and just dig in and say she did it. Like, okay, that's fine. That's your opinion. But like, I don't know. I think for someone like Garrett, like he, he shouldn't have done that. He could still say, I believe so. I don't think he should have taken the money until you have proof. I don't. I think if she wanted to give it to him, fine. I think he should just escort it with like Andy or someone like, yeah, but that, that, that part, was I don't opinion. care about. That's their business. It's not my business. Um, but whatever. I, I think, um, you know, it all kind of sucks. I, I just, I think this whole thing kind of sucks. I think that like, you know, the fighting that's happening with between everyone, like in terms of this Garrett stuff is kind of like unnecessary at this point. I feel like, you know, me personally, and I think you feel the same. And I think Ryan feels the same is like, we kind of just want to move past it. Well, I'm going to say this. So we don't look like hypocrites. Uh -huh. you, you respect me for this. I hope. Yeah. But you caused a lot of that. Of course. Okay. So I don't want people to think like we're in here and we're trying to like, I'm trying to support sure. you by saying whatever the hell you want to say. Like, I was going to say at the end of this, like, can we just agree to stop that? Because mm -hmm. I think it is best. Now, it doesn't No, Okay. Yeah. That's why you should shake your head because you're always going to be you. Yeah. If someone hits, you're going to do what you got to do. I'm not saying, hey, like, can we no, agree? No, yeah. I'm just saying, I think it would be best if the personal attacks and a lot of that other stuff stopped. I want to say two things. Okay. One, I never attacked Garrett personally. It was always about poker and wanting to play. I never said he's a terrible person. I never commented on his character despite having my own feelings about it. I've never commented on that publicly or anywhere. He said, and I quote, Nick Airball is a terrible poker player. Was that the first shot? Because I yep. don't know what the that chicken was or the, the first egg. Shot. I don't know what came no, first. No, that was the... That was why I was so flabbergasted when this happened. Well, okay, what though preempted that? So, I'm not playing dumb with you, yeah. but people who know me know I don't know. I'll tell you. All right. He put out a tweet, you know, one of the tweets about the whole banning thing or whatever, and then Doug made his video about Garrett being banned or not banned or whatever, mm -hmm. right? I'm assuming you saw that video. Yes. And then Garrett tweeted like, you know, Doug, great video, hilarious, whatever, right? And someone responded to him just in, as a, on Twitter and said like, you should come back and stack Nick, me. Oh. And then he just said, you know, PC Garrett's dead. Airball is a terrible poker player and a worse human being. Fuck that guy. Did it really happen in that? In yep. That? 100%. Okay. Yeah, you can't I, find anything that... The, the thing that's crazy is like, I wasn't even involved with you and Ben. But thing. why did he do that? I don't, know. I don't know. I did not remember it that way. I thought maybe you did something and then he nope. hit back. Nope. I don't know. I have, that's something uh, I just want well, to make you're, clear. You're sure of it, and it could be proven. So I'm happy the to go to is, war about that. No, yeah. without, no, I'm not arguing with you because yeah, I, yeah. I just... I'm saying with people. I assumed... Mm -hmm. that's what happened. Listen, because why would he say that? But you know, like I think that generally speaking, like I talk a lot of shit, but people talk shit back. Like I'm chill. Like I don't get upset at all. Like, I mean, when I lose big pots or anything, like people want to like get on my case. I don't get upset. The only thing that bothers me is personal shit because like, I think it's just like weird. Like I, I just don't understand why he like, why he's talking about my character when like he doesn't even know me and he's like admitted that on Doug's thing today he's like you said he said oh I don't really know Nick but like then he's talking about my character he doesn't know me you know and just yeah. to be clear like for six months I didn't 
say a word about Garrett publicly. Yeah. Like I did not. You can ask anyone. Like I agree with I you. I did man. not attacking someone's character with without any pr- is horrible. Yeah, and I, I personally like. I don't know. It, it upset me, and like I don't. I think I handled it pretty well personally. Like I was pretty proud of myself. I thought the tweets I put out were very calm. I as I'm sure you can imagine, was very upset in the moment and was ready to fucking fire and, you know, fire things that, like, shouldn't be fired. But I held it in. I went on Doug's thing. I was very upset then. I still think I held it in and, like, talked calmly. And, you know, I was really proud of myself for not reacting emotionally to what happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing that bothers me about this is just, like, I feel like, you know, (laughs) I feel like Garrett talks about you know, my person, my, who I am as a person, you know, or my character or whatever. But like my character speaks for itself with like the other players and the other people. Like, why do you think so many people stood up for me when Garrett said that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Ishan and Lynn like are doing a podcast with me, but like they're my friends. Would you not expect my friends to stand up for me? Yeah. Ben stood up for me. Mars stood up for me. Henry stood up for me. All the players who have Twitter, who are active on there came forward and said, this is not true. Like Nick does not do this stuff. That to me like meant a lot, you know, and like when that first two plus two thing happened, you know, I'll say this. So obviously I think it's like somewhat fair because I was involved with Rip and Robbie at dinner and I lent them the money. Right. Yeah. I also think it's extremely unfair because I think Garrett knows exactly what, what I was doing when I was going out to dinner with them, why I lent them the money. And I think he knows, and I've always thought this, that I never was a part of that. And I always felt, and I know Ryan agreed with this, that Garrett put my name in there simply to, to use it as a p- possibility to get me out of the games, like to get me out of the, the like out of Hustler. And like, that's kind of like all you're this. saying in the LA times. Article, no, no, I'm saying in the, the two, two plus, plus two. two. Oh, got it. And I've, I've always felt like that. And I know that's how other people have perceived it. And, you know, that really bothered me at the time, which is why when that happened, I mm. went on to Joey's podcast and was like, I have to defend myself now and explain my side of the oh, story. Right. Yeah. After all of that, you can, you probably know this. I've told this to Ryan. I told Ryan many times when the investigation was happening, Hey Ryan, when the investigation's done, I want to make it sure it says specifically my name is clear. And I also told Ryan many times that I feel like Garrett owes me an apology for bringing my name up in that. Mm. And I've told this to Ryan many times. And like, I was personally hurt and i felt like you know regardless of anything else like he crossed a line there so this goes back farther yeah of course cut it and like to me were my actions previously out of line with garrett i could understand why they he's not a fan of them Mm -hmm. but also like it was poker like it's it's competitive it was always competitive like this is the thing that people don't understand it's like when i'm messing around talking shit right i call jungle my bitch that's a huge everyone's like oh you crossed the line Go look at Jungle's Twitter. He's tweeting, it's fine. We're friends. He's tweeting, it's for TV. Me and Jungle have a relationship. I know you do. I can do what I want. Like, I know. I can confirm you guys are actually really good friends. Yeah. Me and Jungle are boys. Like, Jungle's calling me last night. Like, we're friends. We text, like, almost every day. Everyone out there can fuck off. Like, yeah. he's my friend. I can say what I want to him. He can say yeah. what he wants to me. Like, with Garrett, I never called him a bitch at the poker table or anything. I always said, let's play. I always was, like, needling him. Like, let's play. Bluffing him, showing him bluff. Let's play. Let's oh, yeah, battle. That's right. 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 Was it ever like you're a piece of shit? You're a bad person. Like even today, like I didn't watch the podcast, but I got told that Garrett's on there talking like I don't want to cause fights. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to get in the mud. And then he's also saying Nick uh, Airball's a piece of shit. That's what that's what he does. He politicians it and and it, like that's he's what he does. Still attacking my, me and like to me, it's like I personally feel like throughout all of this, even on <laughs> Doug's thing, I don't think I ever personally attacked Garrett. I simply stated what he did and why I disagree with it and why I yeah. think it's bad and what the repercussions have been. And even now, I feel strongly like I have no interest in going back and forth with Garrett. I have no interest in getting on Twitter and firing responses to every little thing. Whether it seems like it or not, I really don't. At this point, I've moved on from that. But that being said, like, obviously, if he attacks my character or anything, like, I owe it to myself. Uh, of course. I, I owe it to my I family. Not, when I made that mm-hmm. statement, it's not like, hey, can we... You do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, and I think you agree with it. That if that could not happen, it's just kind of better. Yeah. Oh, I was way happier last right? week before the yeah, whole like, thing. It's just kind of better. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. I mean, I when know. he tweeted that thing about me that started this all. Yeah. I texted Ryan, DGAF. I texted all of you guys, right? And I said, hey, did something happen that I missed? Like, was there something that happened on a stream that I you missed? You mean his tweet? 
Yeah, like before, when he tweeted that, I was like, did something happen today or someone like, did, did I miss something? Because I was like, why is my name, like, why is he saying my uh, well, name? I legitimately could tell you that I actually thought you did something first because I didn't understand it. I meant that today when yeah, you said it. I think most people did until they realized it wasn't. Like, I go scour the interwebs. I have not said a word about Garrett anywhere, like, at all. Go scour all the screams I've so been So you on. went rogue after the tweet? Yeah, after, I mean, I didn't, I, I personally, personally, I want to clarify too. Also, I didn't go rogue. I was communicating with, you whatever you yeah. you responded responded yeah but i you know, but you responded sharply i think i responded sharply but i also think i responded very fairly uh, i'm not saying you didn't tell the yeah. truth i mean i'll be honest you know what you, you know what i'll be honest with you i am mixing it up i think where i where I, what i'm blending together is your previous stuff no your uh you know you're right if i really think back about that that thing with doug the when you went on a show I think because of the way you were hitting Berkey made me feel that way. Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe I'm tr uh, transposing him. Yeah. Because you were really yeah we were going after off Berkey the reservation. At the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, but I, I, you know, I've had very <laughs> people may think I'm an idiot, which I am, but I also like have some intentions behind what I'm doing, and I'm not looking to get into a big war with Garrett. He said, he said, she said, they said, whatever. You know, at this point, I'm happy with where I'm at. I don't really care about what he's doing. And I also don't feel the need to justify anything else to anyone beyond what I've done. Like, I feel like if anyone wants to hear my opinion on this stuff, like really deeply, go listen to Doug's podcast. It stands alone. It, it mm -hmm. And not only does it stand alone with regards to Garrett, if anyone wants to learn how to be good for games, how to get into good games and how to actually make money in poker, go yeah. listen to that podcast. Cause that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah, you're right. You do it not by gobbling up every dollar of EV in every spot. Like right. that's literally the way you don't make money in poker. Like, <laughs> All the the people that have made the most money in poker, Nick, aren't the fucking truth tellers and the Jason Coons. And I'm not saying that to hate on them. Like I think Jason Coons great. I think Isaac Hastings great. I think all these guys are great. But they don't make the money that like a Rick Solomon's made in poker. But who's better at poker? Not Rick Solomon, probably right. But he has done things the right way. And whether or not that was his intention, like the doing things the right way is what makes you money in poker. And so I think my whole spiel on the Dugs thing and everything. While it was a lot of Garrett, 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 it was maybe more of just me like A, wanting to like clear the air with him and B, also just kind of like tell people what I think, what I'm doing and what I think poker should be, you know? Like I really truly think that like it, if you want to be in poker and be on live streams and all this stuff, like mm -hmm. you should do things the right way and like it's not always about your bottom line. It can be, a, you have to look at the big picture and like, right. I think stuff that's quote unquote minus EV in a vacuum is super plus EV in the big picture. And I think that's kind of what Garrett missed. And I, that's what I hope I don't miss. And like, I know, do, you know, I get offers to play on all the streams for the record. Yeah. You got offered today. Today. They're asking me to play on stream yeah. and the games I've been offered are good games. They're big games. Of course. I don't go play the other streams because I mean, I went to play in the lodge with, your blessing and Ryan's blessing. Of course. As a favor to Doug, who's my friend, wore my hustler hoodie, which people yeah. were like, We support we support Doug. Yeah. And show. People are like, Oh, you got paid to wear your hustler hoodie. And then they, there was like a moment at the end of the stream where I took it off right after the stream ended. And they say so much. And they're like, Oh, his, it ended, so he took it off. No, it's because I was hot as fuck. No, no, we sweating. only paid you for three and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. I was like, No, I was, <laughs> I wore the hustler hoodie because I fucking ride and die. People with hustler. don't understand that, like, the core of our people are family. Yeah. They really don't understand that. Which and is we, why. And we are going to rally behind each and other. And we fight like family too, yeah. internally. Like, oh, me big and time. you oh, have yeah. fought. Yeah, big time. Me and Ryan fight. Like, it, there's arguments all the time like yeah. it's not it's not like we're all just over here like jerking each other off like we yeah. are all like thank god yeah like it's a lot of arguing like it's not just like all easy going now you know so yeah i feel like i feel like the realness of just like what we have now is really healthy and i think it's good for the stream i think it's good for the player pool yeah. and i think everyone's just a lot happier and i mean personally i'm happier obviously like part of that has to do with Garrett being gone, but not in the sense that like Garrett's winning and like whatever, like I'm just happier because I feel like everyone else has been happier, which has made me happier. And, yeah. and just like, it's kind of like the, the it's kind of like started with Ryan. Like remember how Ryan said a million times to us, he's like, my job is 10 X better without all the politics. Right. Yeah. He said, and that. I feel like that's just like a rolling ball that rolls yeah. down. Like yeah. the players are happier. The yeah. other players are happier. It's a lot easier for him right now. Yeah. Than the, this way. And I think that like, the new norm is great and I'm happy with it. And I want to, I mean, be part why of it. would any particular player, I mean, of course, fame and views, but like one particular player gets to be on the phone every week and like talk about the lineup, like whatever. I mean, I don't know. as Garrett We're, said, it's his business and he yeah, has the right to fine. use it. And I'm going to, I'm going to go and parallel what you just said. And so today 
I basically addressed everything that was said on the podcast with Doug and Garrett. Everything I said is true. I am never going to talk about it again. If someone asks me about it, I'm going to say, listen to this podcast. This is what I have to say. And I'm done with it. If Garrett's done with it, I'm done with it. Because I do not, like you, want to go further with it. I have no interest in it. Uh, And again, I know this seems like such horseshit, but I really don't even dislike Garrett. And I'm, I'm going to give a Garrett answer. I'm actually saddened that we're not friends. Or whatever we're not now. Maybe... We're not something. We're definitely not friends. But like I, I, that, that upsets me because I don't, I don't want to be like that. I mean, I'll definitely say like my, my uh, relationship with Garrett, which is obviously terrible. I mean, he's calling me a piece of shit and stuff. <laughs> like that's not the relationship I want to have with the person I idolized in poker, right? Like that's yeah. not the relationship yeah. I wanted to have. You know, nor is it the relationship that I sip I sought after. It's just a relationship that occurred. And like to me, it. I'll be honest, it's a little bit sad. Like it kind of sucks now that when I watch like old clips of hands that he's in like i kind of just like am anti-sweating the person that i used to like i had the best the i had some of my best times in poker at the table with garrett yeah i used to laugh my ass off with him even when i was at the bike i was the mark and he was fucking dicing me up i had the best times mm-hmm. ever and even at our stream when i played with him limited times like i always laughed with him and yeah. and that was genuine and this would be at the same time Possibly that week I had a two and a half hour conversation with him where neither one of us agreed on anything and I just left disgusted with the conversation. I get on the felt with him and he's charming and we would laugh at the same things and I do miss that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like, you know, for people out there who have their, their there's, there's like, I feel like there's two different like views out there. There's one people that understand what like we're saying in terms of like how you build a game, how you make people comfortable and yeah. this stuff. And there's a lot of people who are saying like, hey, it's within Garrett's right to do what he wants to do. And to those people, I just want to say, like, you're right. It is within his right to do what he wants to do. But then you also have to live with the repercussions. And, like, you can't then be bitching that he's not on a stream, that you mm-hmm. want him on, because he chose to do, to act in a way that pushed him off the island. Like, he wasn't kicked mm-hmm. off the island. He, like, jumped off the island, and then when he wanted to come back, everyone was like, actually, we liked it better without you. Yeah. Like, that's really what happened, right? Yeah. And Garrett did, I mean, not Garrett, Ryan did admit today, because Garrett made a comment about at the beginning uh helping garrett or being his liaison and ryan admitted today when ryan was first starting and first trying to figure out how to be this guy and promoting lineups and stuff that garrett helped him a lot to understand building the game with you know recreational players up and different things so there was a lot of you know a lot of things uh, ryan did get from garrett he, he did say that and um like, hey, man, it's just, it's just, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell one more story that I think is kind of like talks about all this. So, right now, I don't work anymore. Which, breaking news, top story today, yeah. right? But um, when I was working last year, I was at my office. Why did you quit? Why? I just tired of it, and there's like a little more stuff to it that I just rather not well, people, say. People, okay, but people don't think that you got your money from poker. That's out there. They think you're either a trust fund kid or they think whatever. But you told me for the first time today, because we've never discussed it, bullshit. I won multiple millions of dollars in these games after stream. Is that true? Yeah, I do quite well in poker and I'm happy to, that's why I'm willing to play anyone is because I win in poker. Like that's why I call Berkey a fraud is because I win in poker. Like yeah. it's not, it's not good for me to say, but it's true. And like, whatever. All that being said is, so I remember like last year, I'm at the office and I get a call and I don't have Garrett's number. I never have had Garrett's number. I don't have a relationship with him at the time. I maybe played with him once at the time. And uh, going into the, this, there's a Wednesday game, right? And going into the game, there was one recreational player who was coming to play who I was very, who I am very good friends with. And that recreational player told me before the game, he said, hey, I don't want to play with Garrett. And I said, okay, I'll let Ryan know like, hey, this guy who, you know. The person playing the Friday game now? No, it's it, I, just, I just it's just someone who's not really playing much anymore. Got it. Okay, well, I won't press you. Yeah, certain player. I just don't want to say. No, it. No, no, I don't. Don't he told me specifically. I don't want to play with Garrett, and he just that's what he told me. And I told Ryan, hey Ryan, like this guy specifically said. I said, I said actually, what I did is I screenshotted the text. Yeah. And I sent it to Ryan. Right. So just like I don't want it to be perceived ever as like I'm trying to. No, I understand. Politic because the guy who was saying that was obviously like a recreational player, and so right. like it might seem like oh Nick's trying to. Like, block Garrett out so I can have more time with this guy. Totally understand. Not true. Screenshotted, send it to Ryan, right? Ryan tells me, okay. The day later, I get a call from Garrett at work. Hey, I heard you're trying to block me from games and you're politicking and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, way out of line, first of all. Second of all, I'm at work. Like, I don't have time to talk about this right now. And he's all upset with me. Well, that Wednesday, Garrett's in the lineup, okay? That player is there. 
after that session, that player didn't come back for like three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. He didn't come to my private. Like I was hosting him private games at Hustler at the he time. He was upset when he saw he, he, Yeah, he did. I mean, he's not going to say that's the why, right? He's not going to say, hey, yeah. I don't want to play with this guy. Hey, I'm intimidated by the guy. Hey, this guy takes all my money or whatever the reason no, is, right? But when someone who's been playing it, like when I was hosting games at Hustler, like there was a t- period where I was hosting like once or twice a week off stream games, right? That guy was coming to every single one of my games. Very good for the game. And then after this, he was upset. He was hurt. Like he felt like he wasn't like listened to. And like, it's just stuff like that. Like that can lose players that are very important. Well, that's the tough job that Ryan would have. Mm-hmm. Like, which way does he go? And like, that's stuff that I felt bad for Ryan. Where it's like, you shouldn't be forced. Like, you, your biggest draw, which is Garrett, what Garrett was, shouldn't be leveraging you that way. And I, I always like, I personally feel like that's really gross behavior. And I'm not saying it's not within his right to do, but I also am allowed to not agree with it and to yeah. voice my opinion and like you know at the end of the day Garrett has a platform to say his opinion on everything and to speak his truths and so do I and yeah. so do you and I'm going to speak my truth which is that I don't agree with all of his behavior I'm not saying it's breaking the rules or unethical or whatever I'm saying I think it's gross I think it's grimy and I think it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and I think that's evidenced by the fact that things have changed and everyone's much happier now and I think uh, everything I've said has been about poker stuff poker conduct and poker related Mm -hmm. and i am striving to keep it that way with garrett and i think a lot of the stuff he said about me has become personal and not poker related and i think it's kind of lame and i don't really appreciate it but despite that like i'm gonna try to take the high road and just look have it in the rearview mirror yeah i mean that's all you could do i agree with it i hope that does happen on all sides uh when does this big uh championship heads up match start the royal rumble yeah the saturday. royal rumble i'm hoping saturday so this coming up saturday you guys are take you're both going into the lab for a week and then come in like two rams and just button heads so i mean we, horns we uh we <clears throat> negotiated with folk on on text wow he's gonna do it came to terms 200 400 400 ante i had to have an ante 100 came in we play 100 hours each session will be six and a half hours or we play until someone loses a million i was hoping for a higher stop loss but whatever okay and uh you know, Berkey said we'll start this Saturday, assuming he can get funds together because he said he needs a little time to get money together. Fine. From who? Uh, I don't know. He needs to go ask for backers, probably. Oh. Um, and I'm not being sarcastic. What, what do you no, mean I'm not to? being either. I'm not trying to be okay. a dick. I, I'm just assuming he has to get backed. I don't think Got he can it. afford to play the game. All right. And uh, assuming he's able to get it all taken care of, like we're going to play on this Saturday and respect where he's he agreed to play. And like, I'm just ready to show up and play. Are you OK? And I'm not mm-hmm. confirming, denying because I have no idea. And I not. If it's not, and I'm not saying it isn't, I have no clue. If it's not Matt's money, are you good with that? Oh, yeah. So I said, so I've said publicly that I'm willing to play anyone. 501k, 500k but min. You said their money. 500k min, heads up, their money, except Matt. I'll make an exception and uh, I'll play him. Got it. Okay. Because I remember you said that. Yeah. So right. he, I'm going to make an exception for him. But anyone else, including Garrett, I'm happy to play heads up. Wow. That would be something. I mean, he won't play. I've offered this before. Why wouldn't he play? <laughs> he doesn't want the smoke. Like, yeah. It's, I, I, I'm not saying I'm a favorite or. Not a favorite, although I believe I am. Yeah. But I don't think it would be easy for him. And I don't think he he wants to deal with it. Like, you know, and that's sure. what it is. I, I've tried to play him heads up. At, well, at the, the offer's sessions. out there. I mean, shit, your guys' stuff kicked up enough dust to get Perkins over there with Doug. I mean, that's how that thing started. Like Doug just said, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll play yeah. heads up. So you're, this thing is like motivating everyone to get out there and I play kinda, heads up. I kind of think it's fun. Like you have beef with someone, like you play heads up. and we I would love it. to throw this bitch on a stream though. I mean, but listen. Berkey's not allowed on our stream, but I think I might make the exception. <laughs> the exception. I mean, honestly, like this it, is it such would, good TV. Bro. It would do some numbers, that's for sure. Oh my god, could you imagine? <laughs> I could. Can you imagine? <laughs> but I mean, hey, listen. If everyone who wants to talk shit puts up their money and plays, I think it's great. And I talk shit, I put my money in play. Berkey is ready to play. Like, let's play. He could put one of his boys like Nick up there and or one of those guys to like, if he played you at our place to watch the screen. Sure, yeah. Anything, whatever like, he wants. I don't yeah, care. Like they're with bug detectors. <laughs> yeah, like you can fucking probe my asshole every session. Like yeah. I don't care. You know what's pretty funny? Uh I had this video and I didn't put it out. It's just like that sign I didn't put up. Uh-huh. Just because I do think knee jerk emotionally to do things to like because like this is such hypocritical shit, but like um I have a video of Matt playing at the bike and you know he's a big proponent of technology and things and you could see two or three players standing at the table standing up not sitting with their cell phones mm-hmm. right at the table while he's playing and I'm thinking 
what are you what's going on here is it like is this just personal like do you not see the phones in their hand you're talking about all these small integral things and this and that and maybe they're all true and right and we should be whatever but how how are these people standing at the table with their cell phones like i should put the video out just to show that i'm, I'm not i'm not making it up oh, oh yeah Hip I'm getting a little bit out of line. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah, but look, I would have hit it. I had an ace. <laughs> <laughs> I had an ace. This guy's a gunshot. Just tell me about throwing me. I had an ace. Five. Maybe that was my spot for Eric to go crazy and bluff it all off. I was. I was ready to bluff it all off. Okay. He's too good. Tomorrow we get somebody else. The turn is a three of clubs. He's on it. Shout out to the only friends podcast. Melissa, Conrad, Landon. Uh. Guy they call the tortoise. I don't know. That's just some that's just an afterglow, little extra nugget. So for for anyone who wants to see us play, I'm playing at Bellagio hmm. in Bobby's room. Wow. You're welcome to come sit next to me and rail the fuck out of the match. Anyone can come so watch. So they can put some chairs a little bit fuck behind yeah, you. Fuck yeah, let's watch. go. Anyone wants to they come watch. They can report on Twitter. Fuck yeah. Oh my Anyone. God. You heard it here. If they come this weekend or go to the Bellagio and it starts this weekend, go to Bobby's room, pull up a chair, bring something to the table though. Like It can't just be like, you know, but like something, right? Like bring some pizza. There's got to be something. Yeah. Don't just come and try to just take yeah. from Bobby's room. Exactly. But, but yeah, you know, that's that's cool, man. Um. Well, I give you a lot of credit for stepping up and putting yourself out there. You're taking a big risk. You know, I mean, let's face it. Like, someone's going to win. Someone's going to lose. Fuck yeah. Like, there's a lot at stake with all the talk. But, um, you know, God bless you. That's what makes you tough to deal with because you got you got some big poker balls, bro. You really do. Bigger than mine. I got no poker balls. I got I got little baby balls. But your balls are big poker balls. And uh, you're bringing them to the, the Bobby's room at the Bellagio. I think, you know, when I'm gone from poker... I'll be remembered as a lot of things, yeah. but I want to be remembered as someone who talked the talk and walked the fucking yeah, walk. Yeah, I, I will say you have made a lot of mistakes. You have a big mouth. Um, a lot of people don't understand you that it is theatrics. Like the thing you did with Jungle made for great, great TV. TV. I mean, <laughs> shuffling on his cards. Like you get all the people that don't get it going, oh, this guy has to be banned for life. Like they don't understand the theatrics behind it. And and truly, there has been some things that have just like Nick, what are you doing? You know, but um, but I could never say about you that you haven't at least backed up to what you say you're gonna do or will do, and I respect that. So, appreciate anyways, that. appreciate being on. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, people like this. And by the way, I should have said this a million times. If you like this, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Let's give a shout out to Only Poker, the greatest poker app online right now. It's free. Go there and sign up. It costs you nothing. Check it out. Again, Nick Airball. This is the Nick Fertucci Show. I am Nick Fertucci and Envy out.